Well, I hope that you guys really enjoyed that video about my ride out to Johnny Ringo's grave. In this part of the video, I'm going to go behind the scenes and tell you about some of the places that I visited, what I saw along the way, and what I learned. I started out in Tombstone, which is only about 30 miles from where I live, so it wasn't a long ride for me. I rode up there in the evening, spent the first night at a motel, and then spent the morning walking around and exploring this old Wild West town. And then in the afternoon, I rode out to Turkey Creek and spent a really good night motorcycle camping and found Johnny Ringo's gravesite the next morning. My goal for this project was, number one, to make a really awesome video, and number two, learn something about a destination, in this case, Tombstone. But I wanted it to be a little bit more than just a story about motorcycling. I wanted to find another story. And the story that I chose was obviously the story of this gunfighter, Johnny Ringo. I did a little bit of research ahead of time, prepared my notes and locations, and then set out to Tombstone to begin. The first place I went to is the Ed Shefflin Monument, and it's a couple miles outside of Tombstone. Ed was an army scout and a prospector. In his spare time, he would go out looking for gold. Everyone back at the base said the only rock he would find would be his own tombstone, but he proved them wrong when he struck it rich. In 1877, Ed found minerals in this area that would trigger the silver rush in Tombstone. The monument is located in the place that he camped before he struck it rich. It's 25 feet tall, and it's made out of rocks stacked in the form of a prospector's claim. Ed lived until 1897, and his last wishes were to be buried in his prospector's clothes with his pickaxe and canteen at the spot where he camped the night before he found the silver. Tombstone's new cemetery was built in 1884. The old cemetery, the one known as the Boot Hill Graveyard, operated for about five years before they built the new cemetery. About 250 people are buried in the Boot Hill Graveyard, mostly outlaws, criminals, desperados, those types of people. Boot Hill refers to the number of men who died with their boots on. Cowboys and outlaws, the less respected members of society. In 1923, Highway 80 was built and it cut a path right through the old cemetery. Many graves were moved and Boot Hill fell into disrepair. It was restored in the 1930s and then it became a roadside attraction of sorts. One of the things that I find the most fascinating and interesting about this old graveyard is the various ways that people died back in those days. Some of them simply say that they were shot, others were killed by Indians, cattle stampedes, some of them drowned, this guy died while playing cards. It really gives a window into what life was like and the dangers and challenges that people faced back then. Here's a guy that was hanged by mistake. And of course, Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44. No less, no more. Some of the most famous graves would include the McClary brothers and Billy Clanton, who were killed in the shootout at the OK Corral. Tombstone was the most notorious boomtown in the West, at one point even larger than San Francisco. Because of all the wealth pouring into Tombstone from the mines, it had a refined culture and acting troops and performers were imported to play at Tombstone's theaters. This is Shefflin Hall. It was built by Ed's brother Al in 1881, and it's the largest standing adobe structure in the Southwest. This is Allen Street. Back then, the south side of the street had cafes and restaurants, places for the respectable members of society. The north side of the street was known as Rotten Row, and it was filled with bars and casinos and brothels. And this really reflects the dichotomy between law and order versus lawlessness that Tombstone represents. This is Toughnut Street, which was the scene of a historic lynching in 1883. It's an event known as the Bisbee Massacre. A group of criminals committed robbery in Bisbee. Along the way, several people were killed, including a pregnant woman. Most of the perpetrators were sentenced to hang, except for one of them. He was given a sentence of life in prison. But the residents of Bisbee didn't think that was strong enough, so they took the matter into their own hands. They broke him out of jail and lynched him on Toughnut Street. In the coroner's report, he said he died of emphysema, or shortness of breath at high altitude. 
The gunfight at OK Corral took place on the corner of Fremont and 3rd Street on October 26, 1881. It only lasted about 30 seconds, but it's one of the most famous gunfights in U.S. history. Wyatt Earp, with his brothers Virgil and Morgan, along with Doc Holliday, shot it out with Billy Claiborne, Ike and Billy Clanton, and Tom and Frank McClary. They were cattle rustlers. This event's been studied in detail by historians. Who fired first, the position of the gunfighters, who hit who, etc. Both the McClory brothers and Billy Clanton were killed. Ike Clanton and Billy Claiborne ran from the fight. Virgil, Morgan, and Holliday were all wounded, but Wyatt was unharmed. This shootout represents a period of the Old West when the frontier was virtually an open range for lawless criminals. It wasn't a well-known event to the American public until 1931, when Wyatt Earp's biography was published a couple of years after his death. I went to the Gunfighter Hall of Fame seeing if I could find more information about Johnny Ringo. If you ever go to Tombstone, I highly recommend that you check out this museum. It's filled with all kinds of cool memorabilia, artifacts, firearms, displays, stories, documents about gunfighters in the Wild West. The museum is really first rate and has a lot of different exhibits about various gunfighters throughout history. Billy the Kid, Bonnie and Clyde, Jesse James, to name a few. I found the display on Ringo and it was really interesting to see what they had inside. There's some of his clothing and the items that were in his pockets when he died. John Peters Ringo was born in 1850 in Green Fork, Indiana. He wasn't formally educated, but supposedly he was a Shakespeare-quoting gentleman whose wit was as quick as his gun. He was played by actor Michael Bain in the Tombstone movie from 1993. When Johnny was 14 years old, his family emigrated from Missouri to California. Along the way, Johnny's father accidentally shot himself and died, thus beginning the tragic life of the outlaw. Johnny moved to Texas where he was arrested and charged with his first murder. Ringo showed up in New Mexico in 1879. Later the same year in Safford, Arizona, he shot an unarmed man at a bar for refusing a shot of whiskey. Ringo then resurfaced in Tombstone, where he was known to haunt the local saloons. Although he wasn't involved at the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral, he was associated with the Cochise County Cowboys, who participated in the gunfight. The gunfight at the OK Corral wasn't the end of the conflict. Two months later, Wyatt Earp's brother Virgil was ambushed in a murder attempt by the Cowboys. A month later, Johnny Ringo had a confrontation with Doc Holliday, but they were both arrested for carrying weapons in town before a gunfight could begin. A couple of months after that, Morgan Earp was killed by a shot fired through the glass door of a saloon and billiard parlor. As a newly appointed Deputy U.S. Marshal, Wyatt Earp then took matters into his own hands and organized a personal vendetta. During the Earp Vendetta ride, Wyatt Earp and his posse killed several of the cowboys, including one of Ringo's closest friends. Perhaps fearing for his life, Ringo drank heavily at the Tombstone Fourth of July festival and departed town two days later with several bottles of liquor. He told a friend that he was traveling back to New Mexico. Now that I had more information about Johnny Ringo and the location of his grave, I decided to go out and see for myself. This is the Gleason Road. It's a paved road that heads out of Tombstone and climbs gradually for seven or eight miles. And then it rolls along the top of a ridge for a few miles, threading its way through a gap. There's lots of big vistas and you can see surrounding mountains in the distance like the Dragoons to the north. Gleason, Arizona is right at the southern start of the Ghost Town Trail. The post office opened in 1900 and supported a population of about 500 people. But by 1939, most of the population moved on and Gleason became a ghost town. The Ghost Town Trail itself is a dirt road that travels past the ghost town of Cortland and makes its way north to the ghost town of Pierce. Gold was discovered in Pierce in 1896 and it replaced Tombstone as the local Wild West town. However, nowadays, Pierce is mostly a ghost town. Remains of buildings like the General Store and the old jail still stand today. This is Turkey Creek Road and it heads east into the Chiricahua Mountains. We're just a few miles away from Johnny Ringo's grave. I spent the night camping in Turkey Creek, had a really big fire, cooked a great meal, drank a little bit of whiskey, and got a good night's sleep. 
And in the morning, I went out to Johnny Ringo's gravesite. This is the gravesite. As you can see, it's fenced in by a modern chain link fence. The current owners of the property wanted it to be left open to the public, but they don't want people going where they're not supposed to go on their property either. So if you come out to Johnny Ringo's gravesite, bear this in mind and treat the place with respect. So what happened to Johnny Ringo? On July 13th at three o'clock in the afternoon, ranch hands in the Turkey Creek area heard a shot. The next day, a teamster hauling wood found the body of a man sitting against a tree. He had a bullet wound in his temple and a revolver with one bullet missing in his hand. Ringo's body was found without his boots. His feet were bundled in clothing. Johnny's cartridge belt for his revolver was buckled on his body upside down. Here's the items that they found in Johnny Ringo's pockets. His death was ruled a suicide and the body was buried at the base of the tree where it was discovered. There are many theories about the death of Johnny Ringo. Other theories attribute Ringo's death to Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and others. We may never really know for sure. Although Johnny Ringo's life was anything but peaceful, the place where it ended certainly was. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this motorcycle ride out to Johnny Ringo's gravesite. I certainly did. It's great having you along. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, and come back for more. Until then, we'll see you next time.